everyone, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Zach. Here we talk about overlanding, gear, builds, DIY, all sorts of stuff related to modifying your vehicle, getting out there, adventuring in the outdoors. Today we are gonna be talking about a cool product that Blaze Off-Road already offers. He's been offering for a little while now. And I finally decided that I think this is the best decision to switch to this setup. And it's for a number of reasons, and I'll kind of get into those later on in the video. But if you're new here, I make a lot of content on DIY vehicles, modifying, you know, a 4Runner or maybe, you know, a lot of the modifications I do could probably be translated to a Tacoma or other Toyota platforms pretty easily, uh, as well as honestly, maybe even some, you know, Jeep and other stuff as well. But I want to kind of jump in. First, we're going to look at this from sort of a top down angle. I'm going to do it a bit of an unboxing. We'll get it installed. And then I'm going to show you just some of the features and some of the capabilities of this and why I really like it. And then at the very end, I'll kind of talk through my reasoning as to why I am switching and what I really like about this system and why you should probably consider it because I think it's probably the best turnkey system on the market right now. And if you're looking to get a switch system for your vehicle, the customer service, the quality, the functionality, and the ability to preserve a lot of your OEM look of your vehicle, I think those are all really positive reasons why you should consider this kit. And I'm gonna have everything for it linked down below in the description, so go and check it out there at any point throughout the video. All right, well, with that being said, let's jump into this unboxing. All right, let's open up this box and let's check out what's inside. So, at first glance, lots of stickers, some candy. This is pretty sweet. Let's dig this out of here. And there it is, so we turn it. There's kind of the Blaze Off-Road logo right there. Got one last sticker here. Let's pull this out. This is pretty sweet. So we've got a little grounding bar. We've got a four fuse, blue seas fuse block. And we've got the Garmin switch. So. And the packaging and presentation on this is really nice. I really like it. And then we've got three power cables here. So we've got a ground cable and we've got two power cables. Looks like, uh, communication cable maybe or another ground we'll have to look into what this is oh duh i think this is the grounding cable for the garmin and then this is going to be the grounding cable for our grounding bar right here so that checks out and then we've got two power cables one for the garmin and one for the fuse block so all right perfect so we've got these cables we've got the switch system and then last but not least we have got our terminal fuse block which has two really high output fuses we got 125 amps for the garmin and then we've got 50 amps for the uh, fuse the fuse box so and then two bolts of spacers are included here this is what we're going to use with the oem threads on the side of the engine bay all right now that we got everything pulled out of the box i just want to quick show you the different contents that come with it so we have two power cables and two ground cables. This smaller ground is going to go to our Garmin. Both are going to get dedicated grounds and dedicated powers. That means that we can ensure basically no issues with the uh, factory ground, but then we can also ensure that we're having the proper potential difference coming straight from that battery and there's not some sort of random voltage drop elsewhere in the system. So I wanna talk through a couple of things here. We've got this terminal bar here. This has got a 125 amp for the Garmin. And then we've got a 50 amp here for the fuse panel. Um, we'll set this aside. This is gonna get attached to our battery. I have SDHQ battery terminals. It's something that Blaze Off-Road recommends everyone install on their batteries. I've loved them because it allows me to attach a bunch of different things to my battery terminals. It keeps everything clean safe, not potentially running into other things, and also not overloading those terminals. Sometimes uh, it's also pretty encouraged just to have clean connections because it prevents moisture from getting in between each connection. And I think things will corrode less fast, or at least you'll prevent buildup on your terminals if you use something like the SDHQ terminal kit, because this will have a clean mount same with my winch and all kinds of other things. So set this aside. This is the hardware for mounting up our bracket. These are our power cables. So in my opinion, this is probably the best kit you can buy if you're wanting to build out your 4Runner with a few different lights 
and you want to keep your vehicle looking OEM plus. You want it to be quick connect functional and you may also want to add some kind of fancy, uh, you know, benefits or, or features to your vehicle with lights. So what we have here is uh, I'm going to just kind of show you everything under the covers here before we get out to the vehicle. So the ground bar is what we're going to use as the negative side of our lights. And then the, uh, there's two different triggers. There's a power cable and there's a ground cable. And then over here on the fuse panel, we've got four circuits where we have dedicated power at all times coming off of the battery. So I, for example, have a Blue Seas USB uh, rocker switch on my dash, which has power for charging phones or whatever all the time, regardless of the vehicle being on or not. And I connect that to my fuse panel uh, currently in my rig. So that's what you could use these for. I'm trying to decide exactly uh, what spots I'll put on here. It'll be a proximity thing, uh, really, because I have a lot of fuse spots. Um, but for a lot of you, you're not going to have a single one. So this is really nice because on all of my fuse panels, so I used to have uh, installed in my vehicle, this 12 switch fuse panel, and it is just unnecessary. It's got, it's got 12 spots on it. I mean, if you can use all those awesome, but for most people, you don't need 12. You just need four. Uh, even the six switch ones are really kind of overkill. All right. So then if we zoom in on this schematic here. What we've got is we've got two different trigger wires. So those two little wires to the left, those are trigger wires. We can program them to be whatever. We can program those to be the DRLs when you turn on your vehicle. Uh, there's a bunch of different things that we can program those to do. And then the one right to the next of it is the power cable. And then the one to the right of that is the ground. And then all of these six, the three on each side, those are our six switches. And I'll show you how to set this up on Apple CarPlay as well. But the cool thing is, is there's multiple ways to control these systems. So if you mount this in the engine bay, you're obviously not going to be using these physical buttons, but there are physical buttons right on the power switch to control the power to them. And then the triggers can do it automatically, or you can use your phone on the phone app, or you can use an Apple CarPlay head unit. And for a lot of you who've gotten the newer head units in the newer fifth gens, uh, you've got Apple CarPlay already built in. If you're someone like myself who's running the Deceit to head unit, everything will still work the exact same way. So I'm going to show you how to use all of that. Um, the other cool thing about these Garmin systems is you can very easily daisy chain a bunch together. So uh, it's not a physical daisy chain, but you can connect a bunch of them. So uh, Blaze Off Road sells other kits if you wanted to have, say, uh, 12 switches or 18 switches or something crazy like that. He sells uh, double and triple Garmin bracket mounting solutions. So go check those out because these have really awesome expandability and their app is set up to seamlessly do this. Uh, it's absolutely awesome. And uh, I really like how it's so modular because uh, you may want to plan for your build and try and anticipate everything, but it's hard to anticipate everything. So, you know, if you're deciding, oh, I'm just gonna go with a simple build, you can get one of these kits and then later down the road, it's like, oh, actually, I want to kind of do some more. Your investment's not going to be a waste because you'll have this Garmin. You could add a second one, what have you. So that's what comes in the kit. That's just a little bit more details about it. Let's jump out to the vehicle. and I'm going to kind of talk through actually getting this stuff all installed. Okay, so right now, this is a little bit of a in-between stage because working on a dual battery system. So ignore this uh, but we have a second one of these we're going to use for the power switch over here and i've already got the sdhq battery terminals and the bracket kit and the 24f uh, full throttle battery that blaze off-road always recommends for these four runners and so what we're going to do is we're going to hook up the next uh, blue seas battery terminal fuse block and then we're going to start plugging everything in. So I've got a couple of harnesses just kind of dangling here. Um, my electrical setup might be more complicated than yours, might be simpler than yours. Uh, but to just give you a little bit of a breakdown, I've got a bunch of harnesses coming from ditch lights, fog lights, and then uh, my SS5s up on my uh, roof, as well as some chase lights. I've got rock lights. 
I've got DRLs, I've got some other stuff going on. And then uh, right here, this is a ignition trigger coming from the INJ fuse in the fuse box right here. You can similarly do the exact same thing from the engine bay, and that's what these are from. I believe the white is the uh, using the tail lights, or I think it's the tail lights fuse, add a fuse to tap into when the low beams turn on. And then this blue wire is an ignition trigger from interior, and it's currently not hooked up. These two are pretty standard on Switch Pros, and I had some of the wiring ran, but I redid it with nice jacketing and everything. So I'm going to use the low beam as one of my triggers on the power switch for now, but likely I'll switch that out to something different in the future. And then this blue one, I'm just leaving in there as a jumper wire that I can connect to in the future if I'm gonna run a trigger from in the trunk or something like that. So these are two trigger wires laying here and then the rest of the stuff will get connected. So, and then all we're gonna do is route our battery and ground cables to these two and uh, we'll be off to the races. So I've cleaned up my engine bay a little bit, uh, but if you zoom in here and check this out, there are two threads on the side. Since my Forerunner's a 2015, I don't have that extra module, but if you're trying to figure out how to do that, uh, Blaze Off-Road's recent video shows how to work with the 2020 plus Forerunner module right there. So we've got those two threads. We're gonna bolt up the power switch now. All right, so here are two battery cables, positive cables. We're just gonna lay these in here like so. I'm gonna try and route as many of the cables as I can before I actually mount it up, because it should just help us with uh, getting some of this laid out nicely without needing to really yank everything around in a more aggressive manner, so. Nice thing about the single Garmin system is it's a pretty small bracket. And what I've come to learn is uh, it's actually a lot better to have uh, smaller brackets and space between everything so you can reach through. It doesn't look as like a designer. Whereas, you know, with a cleaned up engine bay, there's always just the fancy pretty stuff and then the plastics. Whereas with the Forerunner and being able to work on it, and add stuff and whatnot, it's kind of nice to have spaces between everything. All right, so here is our ground cable route that through here. Make sure you pick the correct uh, sides for these cables. So like one has a large ring, the other has a small ring. So they need to be oriented accordingly. We're gonna throw a little anti-seize on these bolts for good luck. And stick these on. Remember with anti-seize, kind of wicked stuff so try to not get it on too much I'm gonna put the bolt that's closer to the front in first and then I'll do the rear one afterward those spacers are helpful because they allow you a gap to run your wires on the side of the power switch run this through through the spacer I'm just gonna put these bolts in finger tightened for now uh, but I think what I'll do is I'll slide. This bracket's got a bit of adjustability. I'm gonna slide it as far forward as I can. So I've got plenty of space around it to work. There we go. Wow, this is, this is a sweet bracket. It's like perfect amount of space. And honestly, a lot of the other stuff on the market, you just have more than you need. Um, unless you're going for a really intense setup. But uh, again, with an intense setup, you don't necessarily need all the fuse slots. You probably just need more switches. So, all right, this is sweet. I've got that installed. Now it's just time to get everything plugged in. All right, it looks like a six inch extension. It'll be perfect for this. There we go. Be ultra careful about all the screws you work with here because you would hate to drop them. They're really annoying to have to recover. Another thing that Blaze does so well is all of their connections are just so on point. Like 
sometimes companies send like goofy size terminal connectors for a given application but these are all like literally perfect size they fit where they're supposed to the inner diameter isn't too large for your particular bolt shaft it's just it's all well done and thought through and actually works nicely and it's just as a electrical I wouldn't say connoisseur but just someone who appreciates good electrical work I really love it I try to do the best wiring I can do for my rig as well and that's why all my cables have this jacketing that's why I try to use nice materials one thing that blaze does that I'm super super close to trying to source is all the Amazon ring terminals are a metal that may cause like I think it's called galvanic corrosion which basically means like the two metals cause corrosion by being in contact with each other so no matter how weather proof you set up your system you're still going to have issues with moisture and and uh, eventually corrosion and so all of his connections are incredibly high end and that's why stuff costs a little bit more when you buy from him but boy is the quality really there I'm connecting all of the trigger wires now and I may come back and do more wiring through here but I'm going to connect my ignition trigger to C1 again I'm being very very cautious and slow with my movements to not drop these screws <clears throat> okay that trigger wire done come in here do the same thing and we're gonna use my white trigger wire that I have pre-made all right so I think we've got everything connected um, one thing I'll note here is don't necessarily take all the colors uh, according to you know their typical use. Uh, I've been running out of heat shrink a little bit lately and it doesn't bother me, but maybe I'll come back and redo some of these red ones with black heat shrink. But basically what's going on right here is we've got DRLs on switch one, we've got uh, rock lights on switch two, we've got fogs on switch three, on switch four is the cross link on switch five is my chase lights and on switch six is the ditch lights one thing that you might do here differently than me is instead of having your fogs directly connected to your switch system you might use this for a light bar if you did that in this case you could use the light bar and the um, the main function of my raptor lights to go right here as well so um, over here on the ground we have the ground for all of those and then we have one additional ground because right now I have the DRL of my Raptor lights plugged in but not the actual backlight feature so for now this is how I've got it all set up um, I don't have all the space to run all of my lights um, but that'll be coming I've got kind of a whole different plan for some of my other stuff so one thing to note here is there's only five connections here, but this last post you can connect to. So that's what I did. It's got six spots for six switches. And then I don't have a use case for this as of yet because I already have a fuse panel over there. So we've got our main uh, power for this fuse panel ran over here. And then I've got my ground cable ran to my battery then we've got the ground and the hot also ran to the ground and the battery so um, all, both both powers are ran off of this and I've got a safety hub 150 running off of this and this is my winch cable here and then we've got two triggers here the ignition which is control one and then low beams which is control two so just wanted to show you all that before I buttoned this up and put the covers on and then I'm gonna kind of show you how one would pair to their system and set it up from there. So let's talk about that now. All right, so I'm gonna just show you how to connect to this unit. So one thing I'll note is you can click on here 
to actually turn on any of your lights. So, all right, so we'll hold this down so it starts blinking blue. And we'll click already installed, connecting. And it'll start looking for it. Once it finds it, there you go. I've already set up the unit, so I've got my DRLs and everything programmed in. And you can set their colors. So if you click edit, you can go like, oh, I want to change my rock lights. Pick the color, how they function, and then the dimmers, inputs, whether you want it to trigger off of input one or input two, which are your control wires. And that's all you got to do. It's that easy. And while this app is really not overly complicated, it's really nice to have this feature because especially for the newer forerunners, this is going to be built right into your vehicle. And here through the app, all you do is install it on your phone and then you can use this app on your Apple CarPlay head unit. All right, so yeah, as I kind of showed through the whole process there, it's a pretty easy install. It's just going to be those two bolts right on the side of the engine bay there and then you'll route your wires to it as you go. Or if you're like me and you had all of your pre-existing harnesses already there, you just gotta connect them. So a lot of people are probably wondering, Zach, why are you switching from your Switch Pros to this Garmin system? And I'll be completely honest, the biggest reason is that there are physical buttons right on this unit. I really like that if I pop my hood, I can press those buttons and I can run those features at any point. It makes it very easy for me to dial in the SS5 backlights because you have to signal them so much. It also makes it for a really nice feature of putting one of these elsewhere in the vehicle because if you decide you wanna mount it, say in your second row or in the trunk or wherever you would like to put this, uh, it's going to offer that physical ability to just press buttons and it'd be right there. And you don't have a separate panel running all of your switches. That's one reason I really like these. I also like that they're completely modular. And what I mean by that is you could run one, you could run two, you could run four. You can continue to expand, which I really like because in the future, I've already got a lot of switches and I really could probably use, you know, at least six more, but probably 12 more worst case scenario. Uh, but I wanted to show this single switch system option because I think that for most of you out there, this really will get the job done. So. Another thing that's really nice about this system is any of the switches you can output the sort of max per switch amperage, which I really like. Uh, on the Switch Pro system, there's four that are rated for, I think, 20 amps, and then four that are rated for 35. I'll put that exact number on the screen somewhere. But with this system, you can use any of the switches for any of those higher amp amplitude outputs. And so I really like that feature. It just gives you that flexibility and you don't have to unscrew little things afterward. Um, these also are just really compact systems. So, you know, they're roughly this size for the whole entire thing. And I was blown away by that. I don't remember the exact dimensions, but it's like three inches by five inches or something. It's just crazy how small they are. I was shocked. I also just like this little compact turnkey kit from Blaze Off-Road because a lot of us, maybe have seen the big kits with huge fuse panels before and you really don't need all those slots. I've yet to kind of figure out a time where you would really need those. I've ran some dedicated power for a radio. I've ran some for my USB built-in adapter in my dash. And then I've ran some power to my rear Molly panels and that's it. Like maybe one other thing you would run would be to like an ARB compressor. Um, but a lot of those, sometimes you'll just run dedicated power straight off your battery because they draw quite a bit of power. And so you wouldn't run that through one of those smaller fuse panels. So the fact that this has four spots just seems perfect to me and it doesn't take up more space than it needs to in your engine bay. So basically how I set, have it set up right now is I have a DRL switch, I have fogs, I have ditches, I have a chase light, I have my light bar on my roof and I have my rock lights. If you wanted to set this up slightly differently, you could probably run your fogs off of the OEM switch and that would give you the ability to run a light bar. And so that's probably what I would switch about this if I was only gonna stay with one Garmin, uh, but I'm going to be getting more. Uh, but what you could do is you could, instead of that fogs, you could put the white output of my Raptor lights, so to speak, and then you could put the light bar off of that switch. And then the only thing left that I haven't covered that was on my Switch Pros was my ARB compressor. But honestly, running a physical rocker switch to that is what I'm going to do going forward. So it should be pretty easy to just implement that 
and now I'm not out any sort of switches. Not to mention the ARB twin compressor, I believe comes with a system to wire that in. So it's not like you're actually having to go out and buy new stuff for that particular install. So yeah, at this point, I've really covered all my bases with the Garmin. And for most people's use cases, you can just plug the fogs straight into the OEM uh, harnesses. And not to mention, most of the kits on the market right now are like an OEM replacement. So they come designed to be wired in to your OEM switch. And they come with harnesses that allow you to do that. So that's really no hard feat to do. Another thing I really like about these switch systems is they're very easy to install and they leave a lot of space in your engine bay. And you aren't going to have to run all kinds of things through the actual firewall. I didn't try to do this, but I think you could pretty easily set up a trigger for your taillights or headlights, maybe within the engine bay. But right now I can't really see a reason why I would do that. I like the engine trigger because it allows me to turn on my DRLs automatically. And that just makes this whole entire switch system kind of half the point because there's some of these fancy features. Uh, but honestly, the second trigger wire is really for something a little bit more fancy if there's something you would like to program in. So lots of people talk about programming in your dome light to turn on rock lights. In the Forerunner though, they have what's called a ground switch. So it's really hard to do that because there's really no good actual positive signal to use to trigger off of that. But there's lots of other things you could do like, I don't know, somehow run a trigger wire to like your tailgate. So when you open your tailgate, then you could turn on your rock lights. Um, there's probably other stuff you can do. Uh, but that's what I would probably use that second trigger wire for. And then you don't need to really run anything through your engine bay to that fuse panel underneath. Uh, but obviously if you ran like a trigger wire to some random harness in your vehicle for something fancy you're trying to do, you'd have to go through your engine bay. A lot of you out there too have decided to run the DeSeta head unit like myself. I'll put that video up somewhere. That is an awesome way to run Apple CarPlay in the 2010 to 2019 Forerunners. However, if you are someone who is lucky enough to drive one of the newest Forerunners, uh, 2020 to current, those ones all have Apple CarPlay built into them and, and you can control this Garmin system as well as any you may add in the future all from your head unit. So if you're someone who doesn't wanna have your phone on a mount and run it off of your phone, you can easily run it off of your head unit, which is really cool. And speaking of phone, this has all of those same features where if you are somewhere around your vehicle, you want to connect to your Garmin and run some of those switches from your phone, you know, wirelessly. You can totally do that. It has all that functionality and those features. Another thing that it has that I think only S Pod may have is I noticed there's a dimness level that you can set on these switches. And I haven't played around with this too much, so I don't exactly know how to speak to it. But one thing that I don't really think Switch Pros has is setting this dimness feature. So yeah, there's some things that Garmin, I think, really can do that are a little bit better than Switch Pros and S-Pod, or at least for the money, I think it's a way better value per dollar spent. So I want to clarify my point here a little bit. What I meant by best value was uh, some of these other systems have some extra features that you're going to get when you spend a little more money. For example, the Switch Pros has a higher output uh, per switch. You know, it's rated for 120 amps. It has eight switches, so sure, there's more options there. The S-Pod, it has a lot of fancy features. It has the touch screen. It has all these extra things that you can, you know, pay extra money for. Similarly, both of these with their kits, they come with the six fuse slot, you know, blocks from Blue Seas. So also great, an additional feature you are going to get some extra things when you spend some extra money here. But my point is, is really, I don't know if those are all necessary. And if you're looking at how to save a little bit of money and you're still looking for the fancy features, I don't know if all of you will necessarily use all of those. And if you know you will, great, you can spend that extra money. But for some of you out there that are really just trying to learn a little bit more about these kits, I feel like the Blaze Off-Road kit is striking the perfect balance between fancy features, extra, extra features and extra functionality by having that fuse panel, but you're not having too many fuse panel slots and you don't have too many switch spots. It basically is a nice balance for all of these things at a good price point. And I think Blaze Off-Road's kit here is a turnkey option. It's great for probably a lot of you out there that maybe aren't as comfortable with wiring up your vehicle because he's done all of the thinking and the heavy lifting there to design a kit that will work for you. 
And at the price point that this is all offered, it's pretty sweet. Not to mention, this isn't something that came in my kit, but it's something that I will add. If you really like the Raptor lights that I have on my vehicle, they're kind of a custom system. I did this myself and it's a fairly inexpensive modification. If you wanna do it, I'll link the video up above. But if you don't wanna go through all the hassle of doing this yourself, Blaze Off Road now has offered a kit to do this and it's pretty sweet. I think he's the only guy on the market right now that has done this. So go check that out. I'll have that link down below as well. And if you're going to buy new lights now that you have this new switch system, consider ordering wiring harnesses straight from him off of his website because they're way higher quality than anything you're going to add to cart in addition to your lights. And they're custom, they're designed perfectly for your vehicle. They're gonna work perfect with these power switches and it'll save you a lot of hassle and time trying to coordinate how to hook up your lights to a rocker switch. All of a sudden you'll have to maybe crank out the wiring diagrams and clip some things. This is just a turnkey way to where you can get super high quality wiring harnesses that will work with your lights and your power switch. And it's just easy and it's super high quality. So check that out as well. If there is a good link for that, I'll link it down below, but I'm not quite sure. But go check out Blaze Offroad's website too. He sells a bunch of different stuff on his website and you can order anything from full throttle batteries to Garmin's to I think even maybe S-Pod. He's also got a bunch of lights like Baja Designs and Dio Dynamics and all kinds of things. So go check him out. He's really a one-stop shop for all things vehicle wiring. And if you also haven't done this modification already, no matter what battery you're running, considered switching to these SDHQ battery terminals because that made this a breeze for running multiple ground wires, my winch, and you can see I've got a lot of fuse blocks on top of my positive terminal. And all of that was super easy and super clean to mount up without any issues because I had those massive battery terminals. So check those out. All these things are really foundational and they may seem a little bit expensive, but they're going to lay the groundwork for anything you do in the future and you'll thank yourself at how modular and easy and clean and safe all of these products are. And it's why so many people already run them because they're just proven products in the market. So hope that was helpful. If you have any questions, feel free to drop them down below. Otherwise, I'm sure you could reach out to Blaze Off-Road if you need some clarifying questions answered, but happy to try and answer them if I can. And yeah, I hope this was a helpful video this single Garmin switch system is really probably the perfect product for most people out there. And it's a lot better than some of the really cheap, uh, you know, switch systems made overseas. Um, those I think don't always have the best customer support. Who knows what their quality level is. And um, they're just not as well supported in the aftermarket community either. So, all right, that's that. Hopefully that was helpful. I rambled there a little bit, but I'm trying to provide as much detail as I can. And maybe going forward, we'll do some more comparisons, but we'll see how that goes. I'm not completely abandoning the Switch Pros because there are pretty sweet Switch Pro uh, accessories that have been designed for the Land Cruiser that really nothing else is made for it. So for now, I'm going to be running the Switch Pros, uh, but I've got a couple things to sort out with the rig right now that I'm not quite sure what's going on. So we will have to come back to that in a future video. Alrighty. Thank you much for the support. I'll catch you all in the next video.